This is a demonstration of how to use calculated fields on an in-hydrate model, which is a customer requested feature. Now, I have already set up a model here, and if we look at it, it's just a customer table. It has just a first name, last name, and primary key customer ID. Now, this does not have a calculated field in it right now. So if we look at the database, I've already actually created the database off of this model. You'll see it just says first name, last name, key, and also all the audit fields, modified, created, and timestamps. Now, if we go back to our model, we can add a calculated field. I just say new column. Let's just call it calc uh, field or calc column. That's what it's going to match the code. Calc column. And we will make it of type integer. And we're going to, uh, a calculated field is essentially a formula that we're going to assigned to a field so the field doesn't really exist. It's more of a kind of an in-memory column uh, even though it's implemented in the database. So I'm just going to put customer ID plus one. So essentially this is a uh, auto number. Uh, this is an identity database field here. So this is going to create a sequential set of numbers from one up and we're just going to say that the calculated column is going to be the customer ID plus one. That's going to be our uh, formula for this field and we change the computed column from false to true. Now it will always be null because SQL Server requires that and also our generative framework requires that since when you add a new item it cannot be calculated uh, until it's actually saved to the database. And uh, these other fields like uh, the length, min, max, and such, those are all uh, computed as well or undefined for calculated fields because you can't really set too much stuff on a calculated field since the database handles most of it. Now, this is essentially all you have to do. We have created our calculated field, we've assigned our formula, and we've assigned it a data type, which is just going to be an integer because our customer ID is an integer and I'm just adding one to it. So, let's generate that. And it has generated. Let's, let's build. All right, now we can actually run uh, the database installer directly from the environment here. And as you see, I've already got it set up for uh, my server and calculated test is the uh, connection string basically to the connect, we're going to that database. So I say, okay. Now we go over to SQL Server and let's refresh the columns. Notice uh, the last column here is timestamp. So we refresh. Now you'll see there's another column called calc column, and it is of computed data type. Well, it's computed with integer data type. So now let's go run a little bit of code against this. And I've already written the code, of course. So let's look at this. Uh, the first line of code is just setting up the connection string. We say connection string is whatever it is. And I'm going to create a customer collection a brand new one. This does not hit the database. It just creates a brand new collection. And I'm going to create a customer, set the first name, last name, John Doe, add it and persist it. And then after it's persisted, uh, it actually reloads it from the database. Whenever you call a persist, all items inside of the collections are actually brought back from the database so, so that you have the freshest copy. So but at that point, the customer ID should be set. And since calculated column is based on a formula, calculated column should be set. So let's run this. So you can see it. Create the collection, John Doe, add the item. We persist it to the database. And if we look at V1, it is one because it's the first customer to be inserted into our table. Therefore, it just will get a one. And if we look at count column, it is a two because it's uh, customer ID plus uh, one. So we could actually do this again if we bring the cursor back up here. We add again, persist, and now if we look at the value 1, it's actually 2 because now we've added a second customer, and of course the formula should dictate this should be 3, and now it's 3. And that is all there is to adding a uh, calculated field. You can create an arbitrarily complex uh, formula with any set of logic that SQL Server supports and the inhydrate framework will just pull off that and make your strongly typed field that particular value or pull that value out of the database based on your formula.